brilliant. It was brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. Okay, so Isaac Newton is the first to understand that white light is composed of colors. Yeah. So he takes white light, puts it through a prism, and he gets Roy G. Biv. Actually, the indigo, he had a mystical fascination with the number seven, mm -hmm. so he wanted to lay down seven colors. Oh. But indigo is just really blue-violet, all right? Okay. But anyhow, we'll give him his indigo because he did all that stuff before he turned 26. So <laughs> if you invent calculus just on a dare, we'll give it to you, all right? We'll give you indigo if you need to have indigo. So he's got the colors, and then he took those colors, merged them back together, and he got white light out the other side. That's some freaky stuff. That's mm -hmm. just freaky. Yeah. That red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet equals white. Yeah. Okay. So we're good there. William Herschel comes around later and says, I wonder, just to even ask this question, I wonder if the different colors of light have different temperatures. So he laid down the spectrum with sunlight prism, and he put a thermometer in each color. And then he had a, an eighth thermometer. I don't know if he used one and did the experiment eight, seven times, but he had another thermometer that he used as the control thermometer. You put that over to the side mm -hmm. where there are no colors. And that would presumably just measure the room temperature. Mm -hmm. So he knows enough to even think that this is an interesting exercise. And he's got a control thermometer. And he just puts it over to the side of the red, out of sight. And then he watches the, th the thermometers. And the control thermometer goes through the roof. Yes, it does. And, <laughs> and, and he's looking at it. <laughs> and he says, Something must be coming through this, the prism that I cannot see. And he describes this as light unfit for vision. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he, does. he discovers infrared light with that experiment. And then another guy which, puts Which a the piece human of, eye cannot see. It's and if, you, if you go to the hardware store and get an infrared bulb, and you turn it on and it looks red, you're seeing the red light that is also emitted from this infrared bulb, and the heat that you feel, your eye cannot see, that's all the infrared that you're buying when you pay money for that bulb. Yeah. And then some other guy put a piece of paper on the other side of violet, and it turned dark, and he pretty the much- The photographic paper. Photographic paper. And he found that it, respond, it responded in the way you would normally respond by putting photographic paper in front of visible light. So he concludes, that was somebody else later. Somebody else, yeah. Right, and says, there's something, beyond the light, there's something less than the red, infrared, something beyond the, the violet, and thus was discovered ultraviolet light. And so, to pose the question in the first place was a stroke of brilliance. To then trust your measurements on a level where you then declare you have made that discovery is a whole other thing. It's a, yeah, it's yeah. Here's the thing about this book. I just because I well, that story I, is told I, I in the book, you, just so people get a sense of the history yeah. of, of of the history of puzzlement and the history of discovery rolled up into one. 